Okay, we're off to the shed. My little graveyard here. And after this, my lawn boy self propelled. It has a, where is it? it has a key. There's a little battery in there somewhere for electric start. This is a nice mower. The self propelled. The harder you push forward, the faster it goes. But it doesn't work. And this has been sitting here for at least three years. So I want to get this thing going again and either sell it or maybe use it in the yard. We don't have a really big yard. Here's Spencer the pig. Most people have shop dogs or shop kitties. Well, here's the shop pig. Right, Spencer? He's saying he's hungry. Anyways, let me get this mower out of here into the garage and we'll take a look at it. motorcycle jack works and sometimes it doesn't I know the oil was good but I'm sure it needs to change I never changed it when I had it I used it for a couple summers that's some good looking oil well it looks pretty good down there believe it or not Got a little bit of crustiness makes sense for that to be happening there where you know, grass clippings stay, you know, when it rubs against things. But overall, this thing is clean. It's been a few years because I bought, I found a $20 riding mower and I never turned back. What is this? It even has its own little uh, shutoff valve. That's cool. Hmm. It's got a uh, Honda engine. And there's your little starter, it looks like. Even the exhaust isn't rusty, you know? This thing's in good shape. I tend to not mess with push mowers too much because it's not usually worth the parts. You gotta pay, you know, depending on how what's wrong with them. You know, I'll pick one up when I find it on the side of the road, but I mean, a lot of times I put them on the side of the road myself if it needs, like if it needs a cable, that's like 20, 30 bucks. Plus it needs a blade because it's so far rusted and, you know, if it needs a carburetor because you can't even clean it so bad, it ends up not being worth it. And this is a, for a little battery tender. I have the plug in my toolbox over there. But yeah, so I'm gonna, well, let's see if there's any gas in it. Oh, that hasn't been cracked in a while. Oh, that's actually good. There's no gas in it. Ugh. Ugh. Doesn't smell fantastic, but. There it is, a little ecosystem in there. Oh, she's dirty. She's a dirty girl in there.
I'm not sure I've ever seen a push mower with a key start. Well, that's what happened. These are just like little, I don't know, spade terminals. They, they push on. So this one just broke off the battery. That one's still on. Probably not for long. But uh, yeah. That's not bad. Oh, it's supposed to be a fuse in there too. That's a fuse holder. Well, it used to be a fuse, so. Well, okay, I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and see what it looks like. I mean, even a fuse holder is less than 10 bucks, so what the heck, you know? Here's our part number. All we got is a positive, negative, and I'll probably have to put new ends on these. And then this inline fuse, which maybe I can clean it up or maybe I'll have to get a new one. I don't know what size fuse is supposed to be, but the internet's a beautiful thing. Anyways, let me find the right parts I need, but this is easy to fix. A couple, I have these sitting in my little electrical box. All right, that's fair enough. I know what I need to do for that. I know there's a belt down here. For the self propelled somewhere. down this lever for the self-propelled, the tighter it pulls that belt. Hmm. However, the belt's not that tight though. Which way is this? It goes this way. Isn't this safe? Yeah, it's moving them kinda. You know what? I wonder if I think I'm having flashbacks of maybe fixing this right before I put it away. All right, let me try running it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, I'll come back to that, I think. Yeah, we're good. That's on the tip there. I'm just gonna put some gas in this thing and see if it starts. I got a little bit of two stroke blend good for it. Give it a little extra lubrication. Okay. Promising. I think I'm gonna give it a little spritz of the good stuff. She'll go on. It's gonna keep running one more time. Sometimes it's enough to suck through the junk, and but probably not. All right, all right, I'll do the carburetor. No need to yell at me about it. Okay, we're out here because my tailgate's a good height. Okay, I can really smell that varnished gas smell. And it's funny, I've never had anything really long enough, like sitting around long enough for the gas to go bad. So I guess th about three years is what it takes. Oh, a Honda. I'm over here with American sockets trying to get it going, but. 10 mil, that's more like it.
Oh, that's stuck. Yeah, thanks. like that. Whole carb is detached. Move this whole kind of bracket here. Okay, so all I gotta get off is the fuel line and the throttle. Uh, linkage, I suppose you would call it. I know we had some gas making its way to it. Okay, so we're done with the mower. Be real gentle with this gasket. I'm gonna go blow this thing off, it's pretty dirty. Okay, that's better. It's not super clean, but it's not a bunch of dirt about to fall inside and make a big mess. Another thing to note, having a Honda engine, this carburetor feels like it's like two pounds. It's heavy. You know, you get these Chinese carburetors off Amazon, they feel like such junk. It's not even funny. Let's see what comes out of here. That's a little dirty. Whew. But I think the fresh gas is making it into it, but I have a feeling it's gonna be all crusted up in there. Let's find out. Hmm. Well, not, not horrible, but it's dirty. The float is moving. But it all could have happened for me messing with it, you know? I'm going to clean it all out. get this jet out. It could be gunked up inside there. So we got to clean it one way or the other. Everything looks relatively clean inside. Some gunk or something is just stopping it from coming any further out than that, so I gotta kinda get it out of there. All right, these little tiny things might do it. Oh, oh. There we go. Now this, I know this was clogged up. Let's see if you can see it. All it is is a little jet, a little passage in there. And uh, I know this was clogged up. Once I started banging on it, some gas started coming out. So that could be the whole reason this thing's not running. It's not getting gas into the engine. So now I'm gonna clean this all out, blow it out with the compressor. Yeah, there's junk in this little hole, I can tell. And uh, put it back together, I bet that'll be it. All right. I got it cleared out. I don't know. Oh, there you go. Now you can see. That was completely plugged before. That was the whole problem. Something that simple. So this is where the this is the main passage where the gas goes through the carbon in the engine. So that's why it'll run with the starting fluid, but it wouldn't pick up with the gas. It wasn't making its way to it. The float was actually okay. The needle and seat was okay. Just this little jet. I actually took this little dentist pick and just kind of pushed through it. Guitar strings are good for that too, if you have any. Simple as that, and she'll run, and then I'll test the self-propelled. Maybe I fixed it. I just, it's crazy that I can't remember, but that's what happens when you turn 30 and you get old. Memory starts going downhill. Okay, I sprayed this and blew it out with compressed air. Though it was pretty clean. I don't think that was really any part of the problem. Just gotta 
Tighten that back down. Now these things are made of brass. So just give them a little snug. You don't need to crank them down because you'll never get her back out again. All right, so the bowl's pretty clean. So this whole thing, the whole problem was that one little tiny hole blocked up. You know, people put their mowers out to the side of the road for that. You know, just, they pull it, doesn't start, it's garbage. Now, I'm not telling people to stop throwing the mowers out because I like taking them and fixing them and selling them and stuff. But, you know, if I wasn't filming, it would take me, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes and this thing would be running again. So don't be afraid to take it apart. There's not much to it. So when it comes to this, you got to look at the way it came apart. They're all pretty much the same. Have the needle in the float there. I go in the hole. And then that little pin has to go through. Where is it? Sometimes they only go through one way. Oh, there we go. Now it doesn't stop either way, you just gotta kinda center it. These little mower ones usually they're not adjustable. Again, just a little, little oomph, nothing crazy. Okay, now we're slapping it all back together. Okay, so this was in first. Okay. That's got me thinking. There we go, like this. They're all a little bit different, so you gotta pay attention. Take a picture or whatever you need to do. I like to live life on the edge, so I don't do any of that. Sometimes it can be tricky. Kind of as simple as that. Where's another bolt? I lose it. Oh, I messed something up already, see? The choke. This is choking. Oh. There it goes. Okay. Good. 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 I'm gonna blow this air filter out. I'm gonna replace it, but for now I'm gonna blow it out. Turn our gas valve back on. Okay, choke on. Let's see. pull now that uh, you know it's running all right 
she runs good. So now we know we can do an air filter and a spark plug and an oil change, just for the sake of it. And figure out that belt for the self-propelled and do the battery and this thing will be mint. So I gotta go find parts and I'll come back uh, once I do that. This is what's happening with this belt. Once the engine starts running, you can see this belt here, which runs up to here, this little pulley, this little differential. It's like a mini differential. Okay, and it's got, you can see. Um, so as, as you push on this self-repelled, I don't know if you can see it, It's, pu it's pulling the whole pulley and making it tense or tensioning it and tightening it so that it actually turns the differential. So the harder you pull it, faster it goes. Either the belt's the wrong size or it's worn down. The spring looks good. The cable seems good. So I'm just gonna get a new belt because the belt isn't looking too hot and uh, we'll have to replace it see what happens all right so we got some parts here our tune-up kit found that at home depot everything else i bought from jeff our belt new battery got our inline fuse our charger so I'm guessing there's no no alternator, generator, stator, whatever you want to call it. So all this battery does is start it, and that's it. You have to plug it in once in a while to keep the thing charged. Otherwise, uh, yeah, let's get this belt done so we can stop flipping it over. Okay, so we just have a uh, like a guide that holds the belt on there. Let's see if it'll come right off. How does this guard come off? It's like just a little piece of plastic. Okay, that's something. Alright, I guess I'm just giving up on this, on this guard. I don't want to break it. I don't know, what the heck. Pissing me off now. Anyways, we can get to all our wiring to fix the battery, which is good. Now we already get to the the uh, belt guide underneath there from through here. I, I had to take it off. Anyways, you get the gist. This is no fun, but I'm getting it. That's funny. The whole time, there are three bolts from the top that held that garden imagine that that's why i couldn't get the belt out that one hole well anyways i'm thinking i didn't do this because i know i didn't go this far with it i'm gonna clean all in here up as well it's not promising that they're the same size however if the new one's a little bit thicker it's possible the spring is worn or the cable's worn i'm just gonna have to see All right, so that was very stupid and annoying. 
I gotta put the guard back on, but I'm just gonna see if it works better. All there is is a spring and a cable, and I don't know, it doesn't seem much better, maybe a little bit. As you can see though, I really got this thing ripped down. What a huge hassle to replace that belt. I mean, if it was on a table and not on the floor, it'd be a lot easier, but whatever. Let me try it, see what happens. Self-propelled is working better, but not perfect. Uh, it's just like, so here's the cable for it. If I pull it just a little bit more, it'll work. So I can adjust it right here. All I gotta do is loosen this nut. I can slide the sheath that way just a little bit so that when I pull it, it'll be pulling the cable just a little bit more. So the kicker on that is, that's probably all I had to do. Not probably, it's definitely all I had to do to make it work better. But we got a new belt because that belt was pretty raggedy anyway. So I'm just gonna pretend like none of that ever happened. But uh, yep. I'm gonna leave some extra slack. I'm gonna cut it all the way up here. Positive. Make sure to put these two negatives together. Man, that's self-propelled really, really uh, gave me a run for my money. It's a hassle. Being that these are two like 16 to 14 gauge, we're gonna crimp them in one of the yellow connectors, one of the 12 to 10s. They asked me why don't I do heat shrink? Well, for one, I don't have any of these in heat shrink right now. And another thing, it's because this is a lawnmower, not a boat, it's not a car, it's just a lawnmower. And uh, as much as I wouldn't have a problem with doing that, like if I had them, I would use them. But again, I don't right now. Here's my inline fuse, the 40 amp in there. I figured out it's supposed to be 40 online. Uh, oh, I'm going to put the end on this first, too. Okay. Buck connector on one end, the battery, spade, whatever you want to call it, on the other end. I crimped this a couple times since the wire is a little small on that side. Much easier going back in than coming out. Thank you very much. Okay. Just come through the hole here. Going to slide our new battery in. Let's see, sometimes you gotta pinch these things to make them fit tight enough, but let's just see. Uh, that seems pretty good. And just pinch a little. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I'll give this one a preemptive pinch. Just like that. Okay, perfect. Well, we got something happening. Oh boy, I hope that started working after all this. It's been who knows how many years since this thing starter has actually started the engine. Hmm. Well, might need some better juice. All right, I'm gonna hook my little, my power probe up here. What do we got? To the beep off. 12.6. So now, let's plug in the charger. I can get to it here.
Still have 12.5. Hmm. Okay, let's get this tune up out of the way because we know we need that one way or the other. The engine runs good and works good. Here's the old air filter. Here's a nice new one. Get on there. There we go. Okay. Our spark plug. Oh, it wasn't even. Did you see that? That was the weight of the handle. One of my pet peeves with lawn mowers, or any, almost anything, is that they don't tighten the spark plug enough. It needs to be tight. This crush washer isn't even crushed. I guess it's aluminum maybe, whatever it's made out of. It crushes when you tighten down. So once you get snug, you have to keep going and you'll feel it bottom out for real. But nobody does that. It's pretty crazy. Now everyone goes, oh, okay, no. Keep going, look. It's more tension. There's the bottom. Then you give it a little oomph and you're done. One thing that I recommend almost anybody to have who does anything is this fuel extractor. Okay, you pump it up. There we go. This thing's getting old. I need a new one. I don't know if this one even has a drain. I don't care if it has a drain because I'm sucking it out. Alright, that's all there is in there. See if we're full. Uh, they actually want you to check. It depends. You got to read the manual, but there's actually a diagram here. It shows you checking it, not screwed in. You just sit there like that, and it's perfectly full on the dipstick. When you screw it in, it looks over full. So I don't know. Take that into consideration. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it, you know? All right, tune-up's done. I got some fresh gas for this thing. It was a little smoky before, but it also had that two-stroke blend in it, so. We'll fill it up with regular, should be fine. Got my little starter tapping hammer here. Be that way. Oh, oh, maybe she's gonna go. Gotta turn the gas on. Oh, finally, that's cool. Some choke. unless you have the handle pulled, of course. All right, so the thing's running great. The key's working, the battery's working. That's very cool. Especially for an elderly person who still wants to mow their lawn, but, but pulling it's hard. And even though this thing pulls on one start real easy, 
that key sure makes it easy. So I think that's it. I don't know. I'm going to clean it up, but here's a quick shot of it all clean. It's about as far as I'm going to go. Wash it with a little soap and water. Wiped everything down. She looks pretty dang good, if I do say so myself. You know, this is this is a full full resto as far as lawnmowers go. So, if you want to tell me what I did wrong or what I did right, or how goofy I am for making a whole big video about this or any of that, let me know down in the comments. If uh, if it's something you liked, please give it a thumbs up. Helps me out and uh, subscribe if you want. Or don't if you don't want to and yeah I mean that's about it I'm thinking about doing something cool with a tractor so if I got my hands on it that might be an, uh, an actual cool video not just a boring fix up a little push more video so all right thanks for watching